Hewlett, Brian Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. Seven thirty-seven on the morning majority. Talking to KT McFarland, Fox News analyst. How's it going, KT? Oh, everything's great, Mary Kay. Good. Tell me a little bit about Iran. This is a fluid situation. It's changing every day. <laughs> Russia now well, saying, but, you uh, know, Mary Catherine, it really isn't changing. It's just, it's just not. they're talking about it changing. <laughs> they're buying time. They've been buying yeah. time for years, and we've always known that there were only two options with Iran: bomb Iran causing and igniting a regional war in the region and high gasoline prices, et cetera, or letting Iran get the bomb, which means every country in that region will nuke up. They'll all get nuclear weapons, and it means that the next war in the Middle East, and there's always another war in the Middle East, that, that war goes nuclear. So we've been searching for the last decade for something new, for an option C, and we haven't found one. You know, President Bush thought that Iraq would be cut post Saddam Iraq would become a strong bastion, pro-American, could keep Iran in check, and that hasn't worked. Um, President Obama thought he could extend the hand of friendship. That hasn't worked. We've always known sanctions, crippling sanctions, would cripple us as much as they would cripple Iran because they would take Iran's oil off the international market and then cause oil prices to go up, etc. We didn't want that either. But now I think for the first time, and really in just the last couple of months, we have a third option that makes sense, which is crippling sanctions against Iran. In other words, blockading their oil so that their oil doesn't get it to the world market. But at the same time, the Saudis have said they'll compensate for that oil. And that the third thing is that we now have the energy resources that we've discovered and can extract competitively. Um, energy of natural gas and oil from the United States. So I think now is the time to strike because regime change is the only thing that's going to slow a rock down. Now the ra- the Saudis do have excess capacity. About yes. uh, they can they can generate about two percent more oil than they they are now, or world oil than they can right now. They are doing right now. But the question is, will they do it? Because the Iranians have said, look, if you do that, we're not going to look upon it very kindly. Do they? Does that matter? Well, yeah, because if Iran is pushed up against the wall, the fear is that they'll shut down the Strait of Hormuz. And they can do that. They can do it in a couple of different ways. But they can't do it for long, because the U.S. Fifth Fleet would clean out the Strait of Hormuz. Um, You know, I look at those three options. Bomb Iran, let Iran get the bomb, crash the Iranian economy, and hope for regime change that they bring about. Not that we bring about, but that they bring about. And I don't see a way where oil prices do anything but go up. You know, they go up if there's a regional war in the Middle East because they're of the economic uncertainty and the difficulty a lot of those countries will have to get their oil to market. Um, gas prices, oil prices go up if everybody in the region goes nuclear. And then you start having conflicts where every time Iran gets out of bed the wrong way, it threatens to close the Strait of Hormuz and the oil prices go up. And the third way, which is to blockade Iranian oil with the banks, not with battleships, but with banks, then oil prices would go up. But I don't think they'd go up for long because of what you've said, that the, that the Saudis and the others in the region would increase their oil. But is it possible to have regime change even with just sanctions without giving them some kind of support militarily? Well, here's the thing. What kind of, you know, sanctions, what kind of sanctions? The sanctions that we've had so far have not worked because they haven't been crippling enough. I'm talking about what Reagan did to the Soviet Union. I'm talking about where the price of oil and, uh, and the Russians, the Soviet Union's ability to export oil goes d- down dramatically mm-hmm. in a matter of months. Now, what does that do to a country like Iran? Eighty percent of its foreign revenues come from oil. Something like 40 percent of the government revenues come from oil sales. Now, if you take away that 40%, what happens to the Iranian government? No money for subsidies to the people. And they have massive subsidies, gasoline, housing, to the Iranian people to keep them happy. No money, extra money for Hezbollah and Hamas and the thugocracy in Syria. No money for that nuclear weapons program. So Iran's mullahs at that point have to worry about keeping their heads, much less keeping their jobs. And maybe the Arab Spring finally gets to Iran. Look, none of these options are without risk. But I'm just desperately searching for some third option between bombing Iran and letting Iran get the bomb. Because if that region goes nuclear and the next war in the Middle East 
is with nuclear weapons. I mean, you know, all bets are off we, everywhere in the world. We talked to John Bolton last week. He uh, he says that you know the cyber warfare that's going on has helped, but he doesn't it believe long term that it could actually work. That it could stop them from getting the bomb. Do you agree with that assessment? Uh, completely. And you know, all the things, the, the cyber activities, the espionage, the spying, the assassination, all that has worked to delay the Iranian nuclear program, but not to stop it. And even a regional war, even bombing Iran, will delay Iran's nuclear weapons program, but it won't stop it. And as General Michael Hayden, former head of the CIA, and a pretty conservative guy, he says, you know, it's not Iran getting nuclear weapons that we mind as much as this Iran getting mm-hmm. nuclear weapons. Um, so I, I think that the goal should be an Iran regime change, but not regime change George Bush style where we send in the Marines and change the regime, and not regime change Obama style where we and our allies go in and change the regime like in Libya, but regime change Reagan style where we set up, we so stress their economy um, using the oil weapon, we so stress their economy that their people say enough. And they bring about regime change. But why do we believe that in Iran it'll work out to our favor when in Egypt it hasn't really? We're unsure about Libya and who knows what other country would, you know, where this happens, that it would work out to our favor, that it's going to be a kind of government that we could get along with. Well, you don't know that, but I think the odds are better in large part because in Iran there has been, you know, it's one of the most pro american the people. Mm-hmm. Yes, are the people very are. pro American. It's not a country, you know, they've tried Islamic extremists. That's not what's working for them. Um, and so I think that the likelihood that Iran might return to some kind of a country we can do business with is greater than it would be in any of these other countries which had not tried Islamic extremism. Um, and the Islamist parties, as you point out, in Egypt and other places are making inroads. All right, Katie, great to have you on as always. We appreciate it.